Uh, my name's Carmelo Catanato. I'm a lecturer in engineering over at the Newcastle College and I teach engineering. <laughs> I would say when I was about 11 or 12, get my hands on my first engine on a car, working with my dad and uh, just making bits and pieces in the workshop at home. And then uh, as soon as I got into my, my upper school, it just took off from there. I originally wanted to be an architect, but engineering was where I fell into. First engineering role was I had an apprenticeship at GM, Vauxhall Motors in Luton. So it's just like your Nissan plant over here. There's making the Vauxhall cars and vans there. And obviously started off with sitting gills, went on to do the old BTEC ONC, HNC as well and uh, finished my apprenticeship and then went into the world of manufacture after that. Uh, after finishing my apprenticeship uh, I moved to a, a company close at home, it was called Boss Trucks and uh, we used to make um, any type of forklift truck you can think of, even from the small, small electric ones all the way over to the uh, 40 foot container handlers. That's where I started, moved, I was missing manufacturing in, in, um, in the finer stuff and um, so I moved from there to a company called BE Aerospace where we made aircraft seats. Um, again, fantastic place there. Uh, from there I went to another company where I used to do helicopter seats, anything to do with race cars. Moved back to BE Aerospace for another four years, doing, uh, doing more uh, aircraft seats and interiors. Then I went to a company called Martin Baker's to do ejector seats uh, and I was working between there and the European Space Agency from time to time, as well as being a quality manager at a, at a company that contracted for uh, basically anything with four wheels, two wheels that raced, we go from there. Working for Eads Astrium, which is now um, uh, Airbus, I worked on the, on the rocket ship to get the uh, Rosetta probe onto the asteroid, which had just landed a little while ago, so uh, I passed off the, uh, the main structural panel for, for that rocket, for that spaceship, so I was quite proud of that. It was really it was back in 2009 or 9 or 10 that happened, so the last, last couple of years it landed on there, so you see how, how much work was involved with that. Well, there was one fork I'd come across for a career. It was either go to aerospace or Formula One, so I had the opportunity to go work for Eddie Jordan many years ago or go and work for Martin Baker's to do ejector seats and obviously I went to ejector seats and stayed away from the Formula One. <laughs> Been teaching for 12, 13 years now and uh, with all the new technology coming out it's great to see uh, the growth of the student and learning stuff from the class, in the class. Uh, coming not knowing much or knowing a little, actually knowing nothing and then actually going through a journey and see their skills, their knowledge growing and hopefully you've played a massive part in their development for them to get the engineering jobs that I've had in the past. Units that we do is a broad based, um, let's say a broad based course where you cover a lot of everything. Okay, and then it gives the student a choice whether they want to do electrical, manufacturing, design, they might want to do a quality role sort of stuff. They, they may even not like it that much and do something after all, but the skills we have here are transferable. Uh, I was in a machine shop, um, just minding my own business, just turn around, I see, I see one of the elderly, gent elderly gentlemen uh, just open the door on the machine, pulled his workpiece out and using the airline just blew the swarf and the, and the coolant off it put the airline back on its hook, turn round. He's noticed oh, there's still a little bit of swarf in there, so he's gone, he's gone to blow the swarf out, and his teeth have come out, his top set, hit the workpiece and fell on the floor. Now, as he's looked up, I'm in front of him, trying not to laugh, and he looks at me, don't you dare, like this. Anyway, okay, all right, like this, and as he's stepped forward to pick his teeth up, he's only toe padded them under the machine, and that's it, I've wet myself. <laughs> As you see on the screen here and the control panel, we have our first program. This class is a, a block program. Each particular um, line will do a certain thing. So this is the profile for these small pockets. I only do one. I only program one pocket. And then I'll repeat it four, four more extra times, which is part of the program. Uh, so once you've designed it, 
and go through the program. Once I'm happy with the program, I'll run through simulation mode to see if there's any false cuts. What you don't want to do is have a cutter in the pocket and come out the side of your workpiece. Just coming in, just like the other iPad, you can zoom in, zoom out, you can twist, you can pan. And then once we're happy with that, we then hit execute. It sets the machine up ready for us to hit cycle start and then we get one of these out of the machine. That's the easiest one to answer because it never stays still. Materials change, machines evolve. Just alone, the Bridgeport has a, uh, a rapid feed rate of 10 meters a minute. The Herco has 20 meters a minute and this brand new one has 43 meters a minute. And that's just with speed. Tools have got better. Uh, things that couldn't be done before are now getting done. It is constantly evolving.